Brucellosis is the topic. And brucellosis is a zoonotic infection caused by brucella. And there's a few types I wanted to mention. There's brucella abortus, which you can get from cattle. Brucella melitensis, which is acquired from sheep and goats. And brucella canis, which you can get from dogs. Now, as you can probably deduce, this is acquired from animals. And in particular, most of the vignettes talk about farm animals, such as cattle. And uh, this is a nice photo of some farm animals. And in addition to getting this from animals, you can also get it from raw dairy products. So keep that in mind when reading clinical vignettes. Anytime you have something like unpasteurized milk mentioned, it uh, should give you a clue to this uh, medical condition. I wanted to mention a little bit about the epidemiology. This most likely uh, will be found in rural areas, in particular people who are farmers, for obvious reasons, you know, they're dealing with animals, ranchers as well, anyone who really deals with animals, so veterinarians as well. This can occur worldwide but there are certain geographic regions where it tends to occur more. Some of those places mentioned on licensing exams include Mexico and countries in the Middle East, for example, Turkey. So if someone does indeed acquire brucellosis, what type of symptoms would they present with? A lot of times the fever is the symptom that you're trying to chase. It's a symptom that you cannot figure out a cause for, so it's kind of treated like a FUO, fever of unknown origin. But there's other symptoms, of course, that can help narrow the diagnosis a bit, such as chills, severe headache, joint pain. Also, the patient will have an overall general feeling of weakness. Anorexia, which can, if it lasts long enough, lead to weight loss. Physical exam is important. That will show a few things that are a little more specific, such as an enlarged spleen and enlarged liver. Swollen lymph nodes can occur. And this bug has a propensity to go to the heart and cause cardiac involvement. So on heart exam, you may hear a cardiac murmur. Diagnosis, the most important test is, of course, a blood culture to identify the organism. So this is very important. And in terms of treatment, it is with antibiotics, usually a combination of two, doxycycline and streptomycin, for example, is a common regimen to treat a patient with brucellosis. One final thing I wanted to mention that's important is prevention. Of course, pasteurization of milk products. And people handling animals should wear some protective gear, such as goggles or gloves. So now, let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. A 30-year-old veterinarian on a cattle ranch presents with a one to two month history of malaise, chills, drenching, malodorous sweats, fatigue, and weakness. He has anorexia and has lost 15 pounds. He has intermittent fevers that range up to 103 Fahrenheit. He complains of visual blurring. A physical exam reveals mild lymphadenopathy, petechiae, and a cardiac murmur consistent with aortic insufficiency. What is the most likely etiologic agent? This question presents with a patient that obviously works with animals since he's on a cattle ranch and he's a veterinarian. So that should strongly point you toward a zoonotic infection and his symptoms plus his physical exam most strongly point to brucella, which would be choice B. Next one. 
A 30-year-old man presents with a five-week history of fever, anorexia, atheralgia, and weight loss. He immigrated from Turkey two months ago. He has no significant past medical history. His immunizations, including BCG, are up to date. On admission to the hospital, he is febrile, tachycardic, and normal tensive. Abdomen is soft and non-tender with enlarged liver palpable 2 inches below the costal margin and enlarged spleen palpable 1.5 inches below the costal margin. On review of his history, he had worked extensively with animals in Turkey and been exposed to their products of consumption on several occasions. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? This is a very good clinical vignette that encompasses a lot about brucellosis, which is choice E. And finally, a 66-year-old Mexican farmer presents with a two-year history of lower back pain and intermittent fever. He keeps goats and frequently drinks unpasteurized goat's milk. On physical exam, his temperature is slightly elevated and there is mild tenderness over the lower lumbar vertebrae with no associated deformity or neurologic abnormality. Most likely diagnosis is very long history this patient has of uh, symptomatology but um, his uh, region accompanied by his drinking of unpasteurized milk strongly points to brucellosis which is choice E.